have, you can quickly see there's a theoretical thousand ways forward. So we want you to think, we're going to challenge you even with your one, one ideas here in this workshop, which rendition of that is the best rendition to go forward, has the most chance of success. And, and the, other key, the other key picture that relates to the similar concept is the idea of, is the concept of idea thickening. Now idea thickening again is, is, is my personal term that I've been walking around saying for 10 years. So people don't really know what idea thickening means exactly, but there's all kinds of other theories that get to a, a similar point, and it's a very critical point. And it's the point that when you are thinking of your idea and moving it forward down this long roadway, you really want to think that you are in a swimming pool. And a big swimming pool and each of these questions that we're asking you is really a swim lane. You know, what is your product? This is the product lane. And this is the marketing lane. And this is the resource lane. And this is the manufacturing lane. And this is uh, business profitability lane, finances. And there's, there's a bunch of lanes. And they, they don't by any means start down here. You know, this, is, this was when I showed you the sales bag. Should you just start thinking of marketing and sales here? Of course not. Really, that sales bag should stretch all the way across here. And over here, it's a very fuzzy sales bag. And over there, it's a very crisp sales bag. Manufacturing, you got to get your yields. How are we going to produce this? That goes through the whole thing. The business aspects and the money, it goes through the whole thing. So every one of those is really a swim lane. And the idea champions that do best they go, they go in the swimming pool, they start here, they start in the shallow end, and they swim sideways across the swimming pool. And they're in the shallow end. So they don't spend much time, they're not going deep, they get to the other side, they've touched a little on each one, and they get here, and they just ask themselves one question. Is it worth going any deeper in this swimming pool? And if it is, they turn around, go a little deeper, and they swim down the pool sideways again. And they get back over here to the other side, and they say, is it worth going deeper? And if so, they continue that process. That's idea thickening. And the reason it's so critical is because it's really important to spend a little bit of time in a lot of areas. But it is not important to spend a lot of time in all those areas. And especially the wow guys. You know, I get stuck in the technology and the product, and my, my lane is way down here. I'm like, yeah, but we, could, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Yeah, but we haven't, even, we haven't even touched on any of this. We got some pretty, we haven't spent much time over here. Yeah, I, I do consulting as well. Uh, I just had a project about a year ago with a big company. Big companies have problems with their innovation as well. They were, they were spending, on average, 18 months and about two or three million dollars, and then they were having a review where somebody brought up a, a dumb question. And the projects that were killed stopped and said, this, stop everything, this is a fail. Uh, most of them were simple questions, but they didn't get the right people in the room, they didn't spend any time on it. And that's one of the reasons they, they hired me and they, you know, to try to work on that engine. And they, they actually got too systematized and too fancy. They got way too fancy and they forgot about some common sense. So just simplifying and saying, you know what, why do we have to spend $2 million in a year and a half to find out that we forgot to ask a simple question? So not fancy, simple. So keep idea thickening in, in mind. Last thing I want to close with is a, uh, a, a little motivational advice for any of you who want to venture down this road. And that is that tonight, before you go to sleep, you visit your motivational hanging file and you read that to yourself. You look at things that you have put in there over the years that motivate you so that you are inspired. Now, let me pause, maybe I'm going too fast. How many people can go home tonight and open up a hanging folder or a journal that motivates you? 
Excellent. Wow, you've got that. You're keeping us. Fantastic. I think it's very important and very few people ever raise their hand. So I'm glad that there's five or six. Uh, no matter what your calling is in life, what you're trying to do, we're, you bump into some roads, some bumps in the road. So it's important to figure out where you're going to get some energy to keep going. And if you're going to do technology commercialization, statistically speaking, you're going to fail. If you go to any statisticians and say, how many companies at the concept stage and pre-seed stage succeed to one decimal point precision? Simple, it rounds to zero. But there's not any reason you can't succeed because also we know that companies succeed and they succeed big and they were concept stage some point. They're just at the .01 or something. There's no reason that you can't be part of that. What we know is it's very challenging for almost everyone, almost everyone. Not very many, there's only one book written so far, Lucky or Rich, right? That's an interesting one that, but from, by a guy who was very wealthy and, and uh, very successful and admits, you know, 90% of it was luck. The right place, right time. He says, I, I have all kinds of smart friends that are not, not rich and they haven't made it. They haven't been successful. So we know it's a difficult road. So we want you to have your hanging files of motivation, whatever it is, you know, a picture of your, your dog, a picture of, of money, a picture of a creative space, a beautiful sunset, maybe someone, uh, you know, struggling with a disease that you're going to help. And, and keep that file in front of you. And once in a while, open it up. But I also encourage you, if you're going to go on this road, that you start filling up that folder. Or if you don't have one, make it. And then just start saying, you know, that motivates me. That's what I'm all about right there. Tear it out of the magazine, whatever. Put it in the folder. I hope that I hear from all of you in the future and that you say, wow, this is cool. I did go on this road. And that talk was part of it that kept you motivated. The coaching that goes on here, the help that's going on here, I hope you say, man, this was part of it. This was part of my story. And it helped me figure out where I was going, what I want to do, which role I want to play. So I hope to hear from all of you in the future. I will certainly be looking forward to, the, to tomorrow and a week from Friday as well, spending time with you. And if anyone has particular questions you want, feel free to email me as well. We'll make sure we give you the the email contact information for the, the week or after you leave the pre-seed workshop. So that is the end of my story. That is an idea turning into an established business. The end.